Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends. Or share it with that guy at the gym who's always spouting off about Big Pharma. I mean, do you even lift, bro? Don't forget, you can also join us at thisweeklive.com for exclusive behind the scenes footage, tickets to the live shows, or merchandise. Thanks for watching. Folks, thank you very much. Welcome back. My name is P. Michael Bratch, and welcome to This Week Live. Well, it's been a crazy week. The Liberals and Conservatives have been coasting along, happy as can be, with nice, fat polling numbers, and then suddenly, not one, but two <laughs> critters swerved into their path. Jagmeet Singh, who was unpopular as a leader at the beginning of the election, is suddenly more popular than both Scheer and Trudeau, and the NDP are on a roll. The GQ man of the people who ties it tall to meet the height requirements for the election ride, is suddenly taking the Liberals in Ontario down. What changed? Singh seemed to do better than the others at the English language debate. You do not need to choose between Mr. Delay and Mr. Deny. Maybe Andrew Scheer's debate start was a little rich given that he casually mentioned his plan to make $53 billion in cuts with no cuts to federal workers. Mr. Trudeau, you are a phony and you are a fraud and you do not deserve to govern this country. And of course he cleverly waited till Friday before the Thanksgiving long weekend to casually mention his plan to make $53 billion in cuts with, he promises, no cuts to federal workers. To $53 billion in cuts. Indeed, we just found out why. Andrew Scheer waited until the Friday night of a long weekend before finally releasing his platform. It's because it includes $53 billion. Oh boy, I hope that nobody notices. And of course, he's promising to do it all without any job losses for government workers. Hmm, where have I heard that before? And where is the guy who used to campaign with Mr. Scheer? Until he became less popular than Kathleen Wynne, Mr. Scheer was busy out there with Mr. Ford, but he may now, in fact, want to change teams because Kathleen Wynne is actually more popular than Mr. Ford was. So the social conservatives who want the job of leading and defending Canada is registered for the military draft of another country. As for Andrew Scheer, his day once again was overshadowed by identity politics over his dual Canadian-American citizenship. CTV senior political correspondent Glenn McGregor has that story. Andrew Scheer faced new questions about the steps he took as an adult to remain in good legal standing as a U.S. citizen. Asked if he had registered for military service. I would have to check and get back to you on so that. So why did Scheer never disclose that he's a dual citizen? Oh, he said, because nobody asked. This is the same guy who challenged our former Governor General Michelle Jean when she was up for appointment, when it was disclosed that she was in fact a citizen of both Canada and France. So by the same logic, if we didn't ask Justin if he'd ever done blackface, does that excuse him? No, so it's not okay. Meanwhile, poor Scheer is so low in the polls that conservatives are starting to circle, even before the election's over and even before he's actually lost. Meantime, more potential pressure on Conservative leader Andrew Scheer if he fails to defeat the Liberals on the 21st could possibly face a leadership review and a veteran Conservative Party insider John Capobianco saying to the Globe and Mail that friends of Peter McKay have discussed the potential of a high-profile conservative leader like McKay becoming the next leader of the party if things go badly for Scheer. McKay is saying he is unaware of any of this, unaware of any shadow leadership campaign on his behalf. It's believed Scheer would have difficulty, though, holding on to the top job if he can't defeat Justin Trudeau. Meantime, McKay, of course, was a top cabinet minister serving under Stephen Harper. Meanwhile, Scheer, an American and now a Canadian, we now discovered, is stealing a page from his kin south of the border by running some ads on Facebook that are causing some controversy. Facebook and the Conservative Party see nothing wrong with them, mind you. According to the Globe and Mail, the Federal Conservative Party has been running Facebook ads on its Chinese language page, falsely accusing the Liberal Party of planning to legalize hard drugs. Rhetoric the Conservatives have pushed aggressively in Chinese, but have made little reference to in English. 
Well, it's not just the menus that translate badly. The ads were seen between 11,000 and 25,000 times and were targeted only at people living in British Columbia and Ontario. Now, Facebook, which is secretly run, as you may know, by data from Star Trek, doesn't see anything wrong with this. No surprise, Google chose to simply avoid all political advertising. And Trudeau, meanwhile, has a big problem. Not only is he, is he losing ground in seat-rich Ontario, where he's fallen eight points, but his stronghold in Quebec, a province that prefers to reject pipelines with Canadian oil in favor of oil delivered by ship from Saudi Arabia, because it aligns better with their principles somehow, is pretty upset with Mr. Trudeau. And after all of this, and after all of what Trudeau did in support of SNC-Lavalin, most people in Quebec don't seem to remember that he went to the map for them. And in fact, they are having some issues now in Quebec. Frankly, I'm having trouble sorting out if Canada is a nation or a nation of nations within nations. <laughs> It's getting confusing. We've got Ford Nation. We've got Quebec as a nation. We've got the many, many first people nations. We've got the separatist movement who wants to be a nation in Alberta. We've got more nations than the United Nations. And everybody wants something for them. Remember when Canada's symbol was once a canoe gliding effortlessly through calm waters of the world? As a country, we all seem to be rowing in different directions these days, and it seems that the waters of the world are anything but calm. And anybody who wants to be PM has to either say different things in different languages and hope they don't get caught, like we're with you, wink, wink, or please just don't translate this or simply hide the facts. Like how none of the politicians today, for example, who are running to be prime minister, want to speak out against Bill 21 in Quebec, which bans all kinds of headdress. Crazy times for the innocent Canadians who just want to get ahead. This weekend, Canadians are about to face a major question. It's strategic voting time. Every party will be claiming, vote for me or you'll get them, or a vote for them is a vote for the other guys. Americans are in some ways quite lucky. They only have two choices, the Republicans or the Democrats. The Republicans pretend to hate illegal immigration unless they're working on their factories or their farms. And the Democrats, on the other hand, don't mind illegal immigration as long as they're working on their fields or lawns, but they don't see the need for them to climb a wall to get in. It's a bit more complicated in Canada. And because we have up to six choices, and for our American friends watching and 98% of Canadians, it is confusing, it, we may ask people how they're voting on a national basis in polls. What matters is the total of who wins in each riding or electoral district. Now we have 338 ridings in Canada. We add up the winners in each riding and whoever gets to 170 seats wins a majority because it's now all about strategic voting. The last week in which they convince voters that a vote for their one competitor is really a vote for someone that you really hate. And if you thought the lack of choice was tough, it's about to get worse. I mean, Scheer is calling the potential coalition between the Liberals and NDP a scheme. Uh, we're hearing Trudeau say that, you know, a vote for Scheer would be like a, vo a vote for Ford or Harper. So really appealing to uh, cohorts of Canadians who are repelled. In Quebec, the Liberals will say that a vote for the Bloc, who will not win a majority, takes a seat away from the Liberals and might result in Conservative Andrew Scheer forming a majority who many Quebecers dislike because of his penchant for pipelines. Ontarians will be told by the Liberals to avoid voting for the NDP who are surging in popularity late in the game because again, more NDP seats, fewer Liberal seats, will have the unintended consequence of again delivering more seats for Andrew Scheer. It's confusing. Sadly, it's all about math. Which candidate in which riding is polling at what level is factored into the decisions. A vote for Maxime Bernier's candidate takes a vote away from Andrew Scheer, and a vote for the Bloc in Quebec means a vote for Andrew Scheer. Simple math, right? I mean, it's confusing. And math, of course, is not something new to politics. We have one of the greatest debates of the 80s in America to thank for that. Ms. Montgomery, a question on economics. Yes, uh, Mr. President, you said that the Humphrey Hawkins bill will cost a possible $60 billion, but isn't it true that the jobs provided by the bill will create up to $150 billion in increased production? Using Walter Heller's figure that for every 1% unemployed, there is a resulting $37 billion loss in GNP. Now, at the present rate of taxation of, on GNP of 39%, doesn't this come to about the same $60 billion in increased revenue? 
It was my understanding that there would be no math uh, during the debates. Maxine Bernier is splitting the vote for Scheer. Bernier, who is the anti-immigration and anti-dairy farmer, who most people forget was once actually a cabinet minister on Stephen Harper and lost his post when he left critical cabinet documents at home with his girlfriend, who used to date some unsavory people. Maxime Bernier's former girlfriend, Julie Couillard, first caught the public's attention last summer when she accompanied Bernier at his swearing-in as foreign affairs minister. Today, Couillard's alleged ties in the 1990s to biker gangs and organized crime dominated the headlines. Couillard has no criminal record, but she was formerly married to a member of a gang linked to the Hells Angels and lived with another biker turned informant who was killed in a biker war. Bernier has listed her as his official traveling companion on foreign trips, including one to Afghanistan. He says he only recently learned of Kuyao's past through the media. The Prime Minister weighed in. I hear that one of my cabinet ministers has an ex-girlfriend. It's none of my business. It's none of Mr. Duceppe's business. It's none of Mr. Dion's business. Mr. Duceppe and Mr. Dion are quite a group of, of gossipy old busybodies. <laughs> I uh, received and I accepted Minister Bernier's resignation from the cabinet. Uh, Minister Bernier has learned and informed me that he left uh, classified government documents in a non-secure location. This is a serious error. The minister has accepted his responsibilities in offering to resign. Prime Minister, um, he's admitted to, to saying that, uh, that the documents were in a non-secure location, but surely there are other issues at play here with Madame Kouya going on TVA this evening and the allegations that she was involved with organized crime and bidding on government contracts for airport security. I mean, was that what really uh, was the final straw? No, the, this is about one thing, and that is a failure uh, to uphold uh, expected standards on government documents. It is a very serious mistake, regardless of who the minister is, uh, regardless of personal life, to leave uh, classified documents in an unsecure location. When we come back, we check in on Mr. Trump and the week he's had plus blues great Stephen Strongman and election drinks from Josh Groom to get us through the next few days. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. This is the place where we come to shine. This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me and where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Zumba.com. I'm Scott McGilvery. Selling a home can be complicated. In Hamilton and Burlington, I trust Michael St. Jean to get you top dollar. He guarantees to sell your home in 30 days or you keep the commission. Call today for your free home evaluation. This is the place where we come to shine. This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me. And where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Zumba.com. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. This is the place where we come to shine. 
This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me. And where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Zumba.com. Welcome back. Canadians celebrate Thanksgiving before Americans, largely because they want to clear their schedules so that they can go shopping on Black Friday when it's American Thanksgiving. And of course, Canadians give thanks for all that makes them better some days than America. Low-cost insulin that was, after all, invented by Canadians banting and best and donated for free to humankind, only to have it be our top seller to Americans who have to pay 10 times as much as us and, in fact, often have to ration it. Canadians give thanks to Huawei for their most excellent, happy, generous, and magnificent sponsorship of Hockey Night in Canada for the second year in a row. Hockey, where our young and old learn their values of teamwork and decency. Canadians give thanks for the American-owned and controlled NHL, who so wisely deploy our best Canadian players to hockey meccas like Phoenix, Arizona, <laughs> while preventing Canadians from adding teams to a sport that they invented, perfected, and then sold. And where the Toronto Maple Leafs are expected to win this year after a year of close calls, we will look forward to their victory, perhaps before hell gets even warmer. But most of all, Canadians give thanks for their beautiful pies. Pies made from real pumpkins, apples, and cherries. Beautiful cherries. But of course, Americans can only dream of real cherry pie. President Trump's still trying to hit the sweet spot when it comes to deregulation. The latest effort taking a big bite out of a 50-year-old guideline mandating how cherries should be used in frozen cherry pies. It really helps to unshackle the industry from the regulatory overreach, um, which is really hindering uh, the product innovation uh, and, and really meeting customers' changing tastes and needs and desires. The regulations say cherry pies must be made of 25% cherries by weight, with no more than 15% flawed or blemished. But those standards don't exist for any other baked good, and bakers say the rules for cherry pies are stifling their ability to whip up new products. The FDA is now making a big push to give those bakers more flexibility, writing in a statement, quote, This is a down payment on a comprehensive effort to modernize food standards, to reduce regulatory burden, and remove old-fashioned barriers to innovation. Industry leaders say they've been lobbying for the change for about 20 years, but it doesn't mean you'll be seeing fewer cherries next time you bite into your favorite pie. The American Bakers Association says most manufacturers are already using more than the standard 25%, so hopefully the pie-eating public won't even notice the difference. So, bye -bye so that's right. The Fox News story tells us that the regulations say cherry pies must be made of 25% cherries by weight with no more than 15% flawed or unblemished. But those standards don't exist for other baked goods using fruit. And Rob Mackey, president of the American Bakers Association, says the rules are unnecessary. The pie bakers that are making frozen cherry pies, they say, are exceeding the standards, and so there's not been an issue. He said it really helps us unshackle the industry from the regulatory overreach. Overreach defined as just 25% cherries. I'm afraid to ask what the rest of the pies are made out of. We wrote to the FDA to check, and so far the rules haven't changed, but stay tuned. <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. Stick with us as national pollster and prognosticator Mark Keeley joins us to tell us all about what's going on in the election, and blues musician Steve Strongman, who is coming out with a big hit very soon, will join us and actually play live. And following that, it's appropriate to have a drink as we get ready to watch the election. Josh Groom, a bartender extraordinary, mixes up some great drinks for us, all of it with a Canadian theme. Stay tuned, and thanks for joining us.
Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. I'm Scott McGilvery. Selling a home can be complicated. In Hamilton and Burlington, I trust Michael St. Jean to get you top dollar. He guarantees to sell your home in 30 days or you keep the commission. Call today for your free home evaluation. This is the place where we come to shine. This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me. And where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Zumba.com. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. I'm Scott McGilvery. Selling a home can be complicated. In Hamilton and Burlington, I trust Michael St. Jean to get you top dollar. He guarantees to sell your home in 30 days or you keep the commission. Call today for your free home evaluation. Thank you. Thank you very much. My first guest tonight is something of a public policy wonk. He started his career in 1984. He worked as an advisor to then Prime Minister John Turner. And in 2004, he actually traveled with Mr. Turner to lead a delegation of Canadians to the Ukraine to oversee that country's presidential election. He's been an advocate and an advisor in the energy sector, the healthcare sector. He's advised on internet security and safety. He lectures throughout the world and on some of the more important issues of the day. He's actually somebody that we want to talk to tonight about some of the important issues that are unfolding in Canada. And so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a dear friend, Mr. Mark Keeley. Mr. <laughs> thank you very much for having us. Good to see you. Nice. Nice. This is great. You. Thank you. The show reunites us. The show wow. reunites us. It's been Michael, so long. Michael, you look fantastic. Thank you very much. What a what a show. Can you believe it? No. We're having fun. <laughs> yeah, and why would you get a smart aleck like me on here? Well, we, we want to hear what you have to say. Well, great. Yeah. Have you been uh, having fun watching the election? Well, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, I, I'm going to say, yeah. I, I've been involved in this business since 77, and I have never in my entire political career seen anything this weird mm -hmm. in terms of uh, a federal election. Yeah, it's different. It is. And I wanted yeah. to talk a bit about that today because I think, you know, there are a lot of people that are really concerned about what's going to happen. There are people that are that are uh, confused. And and I can honestly say that I, I can't believe that we're in a situation as a national campaign in a country like Canada, G7 Nation, where we don't even have a ballot question. And there's some really serious issues that are not even being talked about. And the ballot questions often get people out to vote. Sure. Now, our, our advanced polling shows that people are coming in in droves, so they're obviously aware of the election. They're, well, they're, it's ahead of, year, ahead of the last election. Well, advanced, advanced polls could do one of two things. They can say, you know, I've got uh, busy things to do on the 21st, so I can't vote, yeah. so I'm going to do it uh, earlier. Or they want to change, and they, they want to get the heck out of Dodge before yeah. uh, uh, yeah. all the, the fires start happening. Yeah. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm not really that keen on thinking that advanced polling uh, numbers, and they're pretty high right now, mean anything substantial. Okay. So Mark, tell us, how did we get to the point where consumers don't really know how to vote? They're consumers, they're, 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 they're decision makers, they want to they guide their country's future, but they're, they're quite confused, it seems. Well, uh, I'm going to just say, I, I think it's interesting choice of words that you use consumer, because if you look at the way campaigns have sort of materialized over the last 15, 20 years, they're really... They're no longer voters, they're buying a product. And we're looking at, we've almost presidentialized, if that's the right word, the way we uh, elect our governments. It doesn't matter a hill of beans who the MP is or the MPP if you're in a province, it matters who the leader is. And I think that's a problem and we've got to really address this because right now in Canada, uh, the big concern I have is there are only six people that Canadians are being advised by media and by social media who to care about. 
And I think that's a shame because you've got uh, 338 ridings in this country. You've got uh, 338 times six parties, five if you uh, include that the bloc are only in the province of Quebec. That's right. But that that they would be all seeking to be that member of parliament. And there are some really smart members of parliament right now who are sitting in the House of Commons who are really silent because nobody cares about, in our, in our political system right now, they don't care about who the, uh, uh, the MP is, they care only about who the leader. So people, this is, and I say this to everybody, name me five cabinet ministers in this government. They can't. Mm -hmm. And, or is, here's the other question, who are you voting for? I'm voting for Justin Trudeau. Oh, you live in Papineau? So I keep thinking there's, that's the only way we're actually uh, socializing the whole idea about campaigns, and it's really frustrating for, for Canadians. I said earlier on, you know, I think that we're doing very well as a nation. We've had good government for the last four years, but people aren't happy. Yeah. And I think they're getting caught up in all of this, uh, excuse the expression, the, uh, the bit of virtue signaling, uh, the fact that they're, they're being, they're, they almost feel as if, if they don't, if they don't agree with what the government is saying, they're going to be told that uh, uh, they're, you know, not a good person or these kinds of issues. So I think in a lot of ways that uh, Canadians are really, really frustrated with the system and we're going to have to take a long look at how we fix that. I'm going to just yeah. make this point. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, though. I mean, do you think do you think that Canadians even understand how the Justin Trudeaus and the Andrew Shears control their parties? I mean, do you think they know that there's such a thing as a party whip uh, that controls those 338 members and how they vote? And, and I'd love to I'd love to get your thoughts in terms of what's happening in Canada and how our system runs versus England, where where you've got a lot of you've got a lot of the independent right. MP standing up and voting against the leaders. Yes, and, you know, they can do that. I mean, if you look, we're a parliament democracy, right? And uh, you made uh, mention in my, in my uh, introduction that I worked with John Turner. John Turner is the only uh, former member of parliament who, who stood up for the rights of the member of parliament because that is sacrosanct in a parliamentary democracy, the right of the member to speak. It's called parliament because it means to speak and, and they've lost that uh, opportunity. In Canada, we have a parliamentary democracy. It's not like the United States where it's presidential, it's republic. So we know that, that in order for you to become government, you have to have uh, the majority of seats to become a majority government. That's a fundamental difference and it makes it look, it, it's actually uh, quite unique when you think about, uh, about uh, this country. Yeah. When you talk about whips and those kinds of things, really, every vote in the House of Commons right now is a vote of non-confidence if it, if it fails. That's ridiculous. In a, sudden in a part, death. It's sudden, in death. sudden death all yep. the time. Yep. In a parliamentary if you lose a vote, exactly. the, the government's dissolved. In a, in a parliamentary you to to democracy, election. you should, uh, there are only two uh, votes of confidence. The, the speech from the throne, and we're going to see that in uh, about three or four weeks. That's right. And a budget, which is about taxation. So I think when you look at those kinds of issues, um, I think we really have a long way to go as a, as a country, and a discussion needs to take place about, A, how we get our information about campaigns, and elections and how we elect our governments and be what we should expect from them. Yeah. Because it, it, right, what's happening right now is just endemic. I mean, this has been happening for a long, long time. And people are saying, just like you said, yeah. who sucks less? And I can tell you, I, I haven't heard, uh, you know, Andrew, Andrew Scheer um, really hasn't put forward much and he's not getting good traction. Justin Trudeau, I think, is, a, is an act that people have cottoned on to. And we're hearing it tacitly. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say anything, but they're, they're saying they just don't like the act. And, you know, here's, a, here's Jagmeet Singh, I think, who's, who's really, because they see these other two, they're saying, you know, hey, this is not bad. And, and they've seen a guy who's sort of come out of the, the gate after two years in exile to, to be a bit, uh, he's, a, he's a bit cool. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, that's being attractive. You asked the question uh, around strategic voting. I'm going to say this. There, there really isn't strategic voting per se unless you're determined to do that. And I don't really believe that people are determined to strategically vote. What will happen is math will take over. And here's, you know, you, you, when we were talking before uh, the show, you had asked, you know, what could be the possible scenarios that could occur? Mm. We're doing uh, an awful lot of calls at every single riding across Canada. We did that in the provincial election here in Ontario in 2018, and we did it in the provincial election in Alberta. And what we did was, we, we, they were calls, it's all anecdotal, Michael, but the point of the exercise was, it's not, um, you can get you can get sort of trends and they'll they'll happen. So the calls that we were making were asking, are you going to vote? And if you do, what do you think about your local uh, candidate and issues in that riding? Mm -hmm. 
and the information we're getting back is, is incredible. People are telling us, and they're tacit about it, that they're concerned about everything you said. I don't know about what's happening in Ottawa. It's remote from me. I never hear from my member of parliament. Uh, there are nobody, these kinds of issues. And I think they're getting really angry about um, a lot of the other things that are concerning to them, including uh, climate change, including uh, the fact that we haven't even dealt with Arctic sovereignty in this election. Right. So these yeah. are the kinds of issues that people well, are telling. The Russians are. They're getting ready. Well, sure they are. They are. They're but busy they, at it. But that, those, those things should be debated on. And what did we talk about? Mm -hmm. I heard you know, one of the leaders call the other guy a phony mm -hmm. and a fraud. I mean, that's kind of nonsensical stuff that yes. makes people just... Yeah, yeah, it's turning nice. a lot of people sure. off. You do a lot of work. We've known each other for 20 years. Uh, you do a lot of work for pharmaceutical companies. I do. And, and in particular, American pharmaceutical companies. I do. Um, what, uh, are, are the American pharmaceutical companies watching this election? Are American companies actually taking the time to watch the Canadian election? And if so, what are they looking for and what are they worried about? So we, we're dealing with some, uh, some American firms right now, and the big question from them is, what can we expect uh, from the election in terms of pharmacare? And we were supposed to have that discussion. This election should have been about pharmacare. I haven't heard anybody except Jagmeet Singh talk about pharmacare and maybe Elizabeth May every now and then when she's not t calling everybody else stupid. Mm -hmm. But the point of the exercise is that she, uh, th this, this whole issue on pharmacare, I think people are believing that if we have uh, a buying group, all the provinces come together with the feds and have a buying group, that we'll have cheaper medications. Yeah. Well, I, I, my point on that is no. Mm -hmm. uh, what it is, it's a race to the bottom. Right. And the, the longer we believe that, that uh, having a buying group is a good thing, we're going to be uh, lost in the wilderness on things like innovation. Yeah. And that's a, that's a troubling issue to me. Yeah, yet somehow our, a lot of our drug prices are still quite high. Well, generic drug prices generic are Generic drug high. prices are ironically quite high. Yes. People think that Canada has very low cost price, uh, low cost drug prices. Well, we do have a low cost uh, drug pricing regime for um, for what, what we'll call ethical medications for, right. uh, for brand names. And so that's why, and we talked earlier on too before the show about what could happen with that cross-border reimportation thing. Americans are saying, we pay a lot in our country for our meds, Canada pays substantially less for their uh, brand name, so why don't we go there and buy them? Yeah. And then, they, so with the, that whole reimportation thing is like arbitrage, so I think it, uh, it would be a, a very, um, troubling times. Yeah, so, and a yeah. lot of Americans coming to Canada yes. and buying their insulin. Exactly. Which they can't afford to buy. It's ten times the price. I mean, you know, Banting and Best invented it and gave it exactly. away for a, a dollar. And, well, 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 there's, and there's insulin, there's, there's uh, thyroid medication. Yeah. A lot of the, the drugs that Canadians would say are for us, Americans would come across. And Bernie Sanders is thinking that this is a great thing. Donald yeah. Trump thinks oh, this is a great thing. A good thing. Yeah. Uh, it's a troublesome right. issue. Well, we'll see what happens. Strategic voting coming up this weekend. Thank you very much, Mark. It's great, it to, great see to see you. you. Yeah. Well, well yeah, let's, we'll, talk, we'll talk after the election because I think it's going to be real, real interesting. Yeah. That's, that's when it gets even more exciting if it's if it's possible. Thank you Thank very you, much. My man. Thank you, man. Thank you for seeing you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Stay with us when we come back. We'll be with Mr. Stephen Strongman, who's a great musician, uh, a blues legend here in Hamilton as well as down in Nashville. We look forward to hosting him. Thank you again. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. I'm Scott McGilvery. Selling a home can be complicated. In Hamilton and Burlington, I trust Michael St. Jean to get you top dollar. He guarantees to sell your home in 30 days or you keep the commission. Call today for your free home evaluation. This is the place where we come to shine. This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me and where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Sumba.com.
Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. This is the place where we come to shine. This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me. And where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Zumba.com. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. Thank you very much. Folks, we are so excited tonight to have the next guest who's joining us. It's actually our first musical act uh, on This Week Live. Uh, in, in a musical world of many pretenders, guitarist, vocalist, and songwriter, Stephen Strongman is as real and as authentic as it gets. In 2015, he won the Juno for Blues Album of the Year, and he was named Best Solo Guitarist at this year's International Blues Challenge in Memphis, Tennessee. Please welcome a great performer, and we're thrilled to have him with us, Mr. Steve Strongman. Hello. Thank you. How are you, sir? Great to see you. Thank, thank you. thank you very much. Hello, thank everybody. You much. Thank you, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for having me. Hello, it's everyone. Wonderful. You are having a great year. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, fantastic. What's it's, going on? It's, there's lots going on. It's yeah. Been, uh, yeah. It's been a great, great year. It's flying by. Wow. That's As amazing. you mentioned, thank yep. you for mentioning the, the great trip down to Memphis. Yes. That was incredible to, yeah. uh, to be, you know, Canadian and, and get a chance to get down south and do so well uh, out of 160 acts down there yep. in the solo duo category. Um, they cut it down initially to, to 34. I made the okay. semifinal and then I made the very final and then to be named Amazing. best guitarist is pretty That's incredible. Great. That's great. Yeah, That's thank great. you. Are you going to move down there or are you going to stay with us? No, I'm Canadian through okay. and through. Are you all kidding right. with, all the, <laughs> with all the craziness that's going on down there? No, I'm... Well, uh, yeah, we got crazy going on here too, though. I know. I don't know right. if you notice it or not. It but, seems like uh, there's a lot of crazy everywhere, yeah, actually. Yeah, but no, I'm, yeah. I'm proud to, to be Canadian. I was just in Vegas doing some shows down there. Yeah. 99 bands down there. I wow. played two nights at the Hard Rock. Wow. Part of That's the big amazing. blues bender, yeah, and yeah. myself and uh, our our good friend Colin James was there as yep. well. So amazing, amazing, amazing! It was really good. Yeah. Now you're you're performing in the U.S. a lot, but you're 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 maintaining a home here. And yeah. are you, you here being Hamilton, of course? And have you have you traveled around the world as well a little bit? Or is... I have. I I've been I've been at this a long time, so I've right. been very fortunate to okay. to get a chance to travel everywhere. Yeah. Stuff in in Europe. And stuff, and you know, I've even toured Brazil and Mexico, and pretty much everywhere. Wow. But honestly, to, in today's day and age, in 2019, you gotta, you have to do it as a musician. Yep. Touring is just part of your life; yes. and it's what you do. Yeah, yeah. I'm very fortunate that I have uh, a loving wife and two beautiful kids that are supportive <laughs> of it, and extended family. So yeah. it's, it's well, great. I'm, I'm glad to hear you've got a loving wife because you're in your bio you're described as a restless performer. Uh, <laughs> so what's what's that all about? Uh, well, my, my wife and I have been together a long time, and, yeah. and uh, she's always known that this is what I do. And quite honestly, I don't, I don't think that I'd be able to uh, to do what it is that I do if it wasn't to, for the support that I have at home. Right. Here. Yeah, that's great. Now, uh, in terms of in terms of your genre, blues. Yeah. Is it is it popular with with all ages? Uh, is it something that uh, that resonates more in certain parts of Canada? I mean, tell me a little bit more about that. Well. I think you know blues is definitely a niche market, yeah. but that's that's something that a lot of us blues performers would like to try and change. Exactly. Uh, but also, you know, I, to me, everything sounds like blues. Mm -hmm. Even even pop music that comes out today, it all it all has such a, a, a blues influence to me. That's what I hear. Right. And that's part of what I fell in love with blues music all about. You know, listening to bands like Led Zeppelin and Clapton and all the classic rock bands. They were just really blues bands and right. the Rolling Stones, and that's yeah. where I really fell in love. But then growing up in, uh, in Kitchener, Waterloo, and sneaking into clubs and seeing <laughs> the real thing, yeah. uh, I saw a guy named Mel Brown play at a club called okay. Pop the Gator and wow. completely changed my whole life. And I realized 
that's it. That's, that's what amazing. it is I want to do. Amazing. And do you find time to teach a little bit as well, or? I do. I uh, I've never really focused on on teaching like all the time, but uh, I've been very lucky to go into Blues in the Schools programs across Canada, and uh, at home in Hamilton, I've done some stuff going into the school, working for the HWDSB a little bit, but really performing is the cornerstone of what it is right. that I do and, and me touring as Steve Strong and the artist my yeah. seventh record just coming out. That's great no the, on, yeah. on the subject of your seventh record we actually yeah. have a copy of it here thank you very much so this is the new album called Tired of Talking. Tired of Talking there it which is. Which is amazing and, and you filmed it where in Nashville and in Hamilton? We recorded it um, in, in Nashville half, mm -hmm. of the, half of it was in, recorded in Nashville half was done in Hamilton I have some absolutely killer guests on there. Right. Uh, Pat Sansone from a band called Wilco plays on there. Right. Oddly Freed, he plays with Sheryl Crow and Amazing. the Black Crows. And okay. He's on there, and James Haggerty, who plays with the Blues Brothers, is on there. Wow, fantastic. Dave King produced it yep. from Hamilton, East oh. Mountain of Hamilton, Ontario. Oh, isn't that great? Colin Lapsley from Hamilton. Yep. We have got some great people performing. Jesse O'Brien wow. and, and, uh, and myself. So it's it's a... Yep. It's really getting a lot of airplay right now, and it's a very exciting time. That's fantastic. And the interesting thing is that you're actually going to release it on vinyl as well. I know. If you can believe it, it's <laughs> my first record that I'm putting out on vinyl. Yeah. And I think that uh, this this year is the first year since CDs came out that vinyl actually outsold CDs. Wow. So I, I really get a lot of people asking about yep. it. A can lot you, of people saying... Can you hear the difference? Well, w interestingly enough, we literally just got the vinyl today, so I yeah. haven't even listened oh, to it geez, yet myself. We should have set up a record, record player for you. Yeah, we could have. We, we could have, we could have, have asked the audience it. to tell us what they thought. Could have debuted it here, but it'll, it'll be What's out better? soon enough at the end of the month. That's the great. Vinyl. That's great. So that's very exciting. Well, listen, could we prevail upon you to, uh, to play something for us? Absolutely. My that, pleasure. That'd be great. Well, when we come back, we will get a chance to listen to Steve Strongman perform. And what song are we going to I'm going to play a song off of this record, Tired of Talking, called Highway Man. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We'll come back. <laughs> Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. I'm Scott McGilvery. Selling a home can be complicated. In Hamilton and Burlington, I trust Michael St. Jean to get you top dollar. He guarantees to sell your home in 30 days or you keep the commission. Call today for your free home evaluation. This is the place where we come to shine. This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me. And where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Sumba.com. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Strongman playing Highwayman. <laughs>
street Well, they're killing each other Right down my street Well, there's blood on the doorway There's blood at my feet Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. I'm Scott McGilvery. Selling a home can be complicated. In Hamilton and Burlington, I trust Michael St. Jean to get you top dollar. He guarantees to sell your home in 30 days or you keep the commission. Call today for your free home evaluation. This is the place where we come to shine. This is the place where we share the spotlight. This is the place where we reconnect with ourselves. This is where the magic happens. Where you find what you've been looking for. Where you turn I can't into I dare you to stop me and where you give your calories one last dance. Take the first step. Find a class at Zumba.com. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. Gilbert. Selling a home can be complicated. In Hamilton and Burlington, I trust Michael St. Jean to get you top dollar. He guarantees to sell your home in 30 days or you keep the commission. Call today for your free home evaluation. Mercedes-Benz Burlington is more than a dealership. We're a community-driven institution backed by unmatched service and on-site luxury amenities. Visit our spa, golf simulator, cafe, and more. The quantum experience begins when we hand you the key. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's cold outside. It's getting colder by the minute, and that's why it's a good time to talk about whiskey. Uh, obviously, also, the other issue is that we've got an election coming up. So we have with us one of the top North American brand ambassadors for Gibson's finest Canadian whiskey. Please help me welcome Mr. Josh Groom, mixologist. Hey. 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 Great so to see you. Here. So good to great see you. Great to see you, man. Thanks great for to having see you. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So we, we worked together at one point in time. And yeah, so yeah, it's definitely. great to, to have you here. Helped forge uh, some identity into the Hamilton food scene, all Canadian, all the time, right from on. wine right. to whiskey to... Uh, basically cocktails. It's right. really funny. We're going to talk about some, well, Canadian cocktails that affected what's happening now in the world of cocktail making. Hopefully what's going to affect you after what happens with this election. <laughs> um, we'll see what we can do, but yeah. um, classic we'll cocktails, Canadian whiskey, uh, they go hand in hand and a lot of people don't realize that prohibition was a, a big time where where Canada affected the world globally and it's still doing this to the day and uh, we get to showcase it now. So talk Fantastic. about some Fantastic. fun Fantastic. stuff. Look forward. Great products, uh, Gibson's Finest Canadian Whiskey, uh, they age for longer, which makes smoother drinks, which makes more fun happen, which does a lot of things. And I think on October 21st, which happens to be my birthday. My goodness, I won't forget. No, don't not, forget. Not like I won't, I'm going to expect years. some kind of message yeah. or uh, maybe a large gift, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll yeah. work that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah for I'll sure. Get you so, some whiskey. Well, you want to talk some booze? Yeah, let's talk about it. What okay. do you got going? So, um, we're going to do some cocktails, one specifically the Toronto cocktail. Right. Um, makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, it's the identity of our country in a quasi weird way. <laughs> um, originated in uh, basically the middle part of this last century that just passed. Um, it actually originated in England. Uh, people from Toronto were drinking a lot of Toronto cocktails because of the fact that they really liked one product, so Fernet Branca. Um, 
built on Canadian whiskey, as I said earlier, because of the fact that prohibition uh, with the stop of American whiskey and basically um, import of any whiskey in the United States, Canadian whiskey had a time to shine. So Gibson's Finest Sterling is a four year minimum age product and Fernet Branca mixed with it creates a very bitter element. So maybe that's your choice after what happens. Yeah, on yeah, well, we'll see uh, how the election goes. We will for sure. Uh, the, the next cocktail that we're going to make is or, or maybe finish is a uh, classic. It's Manhattan talking about our friends south of the border. Uh, it's built on Canadian whiskey though, so it's very neat and it's done with Gibson's finest bold eight year. I think we should really add some ice to these and maybe finish it off real quick so we can get these guys at the bar here a little beverage to enjoy while they listen to us banter. <laughs> That's great. Now where do they make Gibson's finest whiskey? Great question. So mm. we're made in the most southern point of Canada. That's wow. kind of how I sell it. Um, Windsor. Oh. Hiram Walker, very, very big facility, big outpost. Uh, this specific brand lays down there too, so ages inside X bourbon barrels. Really kind of gets all of its beautiful wow. characteristics and showcases very well in this cocktail. So the drink that we're making right here, or I'm finishing, because I'm really just quite lazy and like to make sure that I have great conversations when we hang out, Michael. Um, this one right here, two parts, Canadian whiskey, today Gibson's Finest Sterling, half part for Nebraska half part simple syrup, and then two dashes of Angostura bitters. Beautiful. Very, very easy to drink, <laughs> um, delicious, but it does have just a touch of bitterness. Okay. So we'll hand this over. Great. Yeah, Laura, Laura give it a try. You can enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about other cocktails. It goes well after, after some blues. It does, for sure, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, Toronto cocktails always go down smooth after some blues. <laughs> All right. Yeah, how really do you feel about that? Good. That's great. Is it well balanced? It's delicious. That's the key to cocktail. So I don't know how many people Perfect. know what it is to cocktail, but there's really just four elements to worry about. Okay. There's alcohol, bitterness, acidity, and sugar. You have them in balance, mm -hmm. and people at your bar will want another one. Really, really fun. So all the Great. classic cocktails basically do this really well. This yeah. one specifically seems like a lot of alcohol and sugar. The citrus comes from that zest, and it's so important to have that aromatically and flavor profile-wise. It creates that great balance. And well, when she's done that one, we'll make her another one. <laughs> um, the next cocktail. No pressure. That mean, no, not yeah, at all. Yeah. She, no, there's tons of pressure. Yeah. Lots of pressure. He right? does this when he serves cereal too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, happens yeah. every morning. The two daughters, um, they love their cereal because mm -hmm. I, I force them into <laughs> loving their cereal. The next, the next one, a uh, Manhattan. It's a classic. Uh, I always remember the recipe really quickly by the area code of Manhattan. So two one two. Yep, All right, perfect. Two parts Gibson's finest bold eight year, one part sweet vermouth, two dashes of Angostura bitters. All of these ingredients are showcased right here, but the key to it is stirring. And we're gonna showcase that in one second. I'm gonna do this really quickly one more time. So if you take a look at what I'm doing, if you take an orange zest and you peel it right over top of the drink, not only does it get a beautiful perfume, so does Laura actually, <laughs> but the drink has a lot of elements of aromatics that are delicious. So that mm. one's finished as well. Again, they're all or garnished with orange. Well, because everybody loves oranges. Finally. yeah. This cocktail right here, the old fashioned, probably the most popular cocktail that's happening globally in this prohibition cocktail movement, showcasing a 12 year old product. It's two ounces of alcohol. So very simply put, Gibson's finest 12 year rare, two dashes of Angostura bitters, one, two, always heavy whenever working with bitters because mm -hmm. of the fact that it creates that balance that you need to have a great tasting cocktail. And then one part of simple syrup. Now you can play with that amount of simple syrup, you can lighten it, you can get heavier with it, it all depends on how you like your beverages. Mm. I prefer to make drinks that people like more. When we work together, you preferred me to make drinks that people <laughs> like more. So. Absolutely. Whatever sells. With that being said, the biggest part of this. So when I stir cocktails or when you make good beverages, really what you want to do is you want to make sure that you spend some time doing this. It's always a great opportunity to talk to your guests talk to anybody that you want to talk to, mm -hmm. or simply mm -hmm. just be quiet and stare at people until they feel very, <laughs> very awkward. Um, this cocktail takes a little bit of time. The ice is so important. It breaks down really slowly and it basically adds water, diluting the, the whiskey, helping the cocktails to basically open up and showcase all that great flavor that's stored mm -hmm. inside the whiskey over 12 years of aging. Mm -hmm. So the str straining process, very simply put, use a Hawthorne strainer or a julep strainer and get all of that beautiful product that you worked with out of that mixing glass. You got any questions? Come on. Yeah, no, I'm Michael, that's great. So it's okay. It's not, a, it's not an offense to use ice with whiskey. Not at all. Where it no. is, the scotch drinkers are often quite kind of picky about that. Yeah, you're completely they're, right. They're 100%. Very now, my, very my school of thought is that if you like doing something, do it. 
That's kind of how I feel about it. Right. The one thought or the communication point on scotch and being open, that's really what it is. The oxygen inside the water allows the whiskey to show everything that it carries. Okay. Now this cocktail is simply finished after with a little bit of a chilled glass, load up. So it's shaken and stirred. Well, a little bit. It kind of yeah. shook itself, didn't yeah, it's it? it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, you know? it's tricky. Confusing. You've got to keep your eyes on me. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, that cool finish that we have, that orange zest working its essential oils out. Take that finish, work the cocktail, have some fun with it. If you want to get a little bit tricky, a little bit fancier, you can basically wipe the rim down. This is good for people that may have just come from outside. <laughs> you know what that happens at bars sometimes. That's an old fashioned built with Gibson's finest Canadian whiskey. Fabulous. Now let's talk more about what's yeah. going on. Yeah, that's great, good. You're, you're enjoying yourself? I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Maybe we should share some with the audience as I well. I think that's a great idea. I think, I think that's great. Yeah, that's, that's ah. that. No, the audience says no. The audience says no. <laughs> no, nobody likes alcohol. <laughs> Thank you very much, of Joshua. Course, it's great right? to see it all. And we'll, uh, I'm sure a lot of Canadians will be getting through the election with all these great drinks that you put forward and, and getting through the winter. 100%. Love they're it. all heartwarming and they're all good for, yeah. well, election night. Yeah, and it prevents scurvy too with all the right. oranges, right? So it's, it's really smart. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank Cheers. You, Thank bro. you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends. Or share it with that guy at the gym who's always spouting off about Big Pharma. I mean, do you even lift, bro?